We are also closely watching the Senate race in Alaska. Republican Senator Lisa Murkowski is seeking re-election against Trump-backed candidate Kelly Chewbacca. Murkowski was one of seven GOP senators who voted to convict former President Trump during his second impeachment trial. She's the only one of those lawmakers up for re-election this cycle. In 2010, Murkowski became the first U.S. senator in more than 50 years to win an election with a write-in campaign. For more, we are joined by the senator from Anchorage, Alaska. Thank you, Senator, so much for being here. Absolutely, good to be with you, John. You are a Republican who's been in office for 20 years. Your father was a Republican senator for about that long and governor. The state has not voted for a Democrat since 1964 for president, and yet you're in a tight race with a Republican opponent who denies the outcome of the last election and won't accept the results of this one. What's going on? <laughs> Alaska is no stranger to, to interesting elections. All you need to do is go back to, to 2010. Uh, you mentioned it in the intro there when uh, we did kind of an unorthodox thing with a write-in campaign and, and demonstrated kind of the independence of Alaskans. We're conservative, uh, but we're, we're mightily independent. And this is, just, this is just Alaskans rolling through the election cycle. You, as a write-in candidate, already uh, had a complex relationship with the Republican Party. More than half of the Republicans running uh, deny the, the last election results, including your opponent. Would you diagnose the health of the Republican Party for me? Well, I'm, I'm not prepared to diagnose the, the health of the Republican Party throughout the country. I would suggest to you that here in, in Alaska, uh, the Republican Party has has narrowed its its sphere of influence. We're not a state that that identifies heavily with one party or another. Over 63 percent of the electorate chooses not to align themselves with either the Democratic or the Republican Party. We're again, we're pretty independent in that way. And so I think I think it's important to to look when you're when you're analyzing Alaska and what's going on, kind of the, the, the clean divide of partisan politics just doesn't necessarily play out here. I'm going to ask you about partisan politics again, but I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about policy first uh, to, give, <laughs> to switch topics for a second. Uh, Abortion rights. Uh, following the overturn, mm -hmm. overturning of Roe versus Wade, Wade, you said, quote, your confidence in the court has been rocked. Given uh, what may happen, which is Republican control of the Senate, uh, which means a possible national abortion ban, um, or even if Democrats keep control, it doesn't seem like uh, codification of Roe versus Wade is going to pass the Senate. So what can be done? What, what do you want to see uh, happen in the Senate that's realistic? Well, codification of Roe versus Wade is not going to happen unless there is a bipartisan approach to it. It is as simple as that. And that's why I, along with Susan Collins, uh, Tim Kaine, and Kirsten Sinema, sat down uh, some months ago to, to figure out, is there a path forward? We have a ways to go with it. But again, if you don't start out with something that is bipartisan in the first place, you're, you are doomed to fail, particularly on matters um, as, as as significant as we're talking about with with a woman's uh, right to choose and and control her reproductive health care, so we've got a ways to go. But but I am not in the camp that says it cannot be done. But to be done, it would need to clear a sixty vote th threshold. So far, mm -hmm. you've named two Republicans, including yourself. Right. You've experienced the challenge of uh, bucking your party in your own state. So you've got to find eight Republicans. That just does not seem a, a realistic possibility in today's Republican Party on an issue that members of the party fought for for 50 years and achieved this extraordinary victory by their lights. Well, it is it is impossible to achieve if we say that there's no way we can make it happen. Um, I know that there are some that are saying the only path forward is to to eliminate the filibuster. Keep in mind, keep in mind that it, uh, it may be a, a quick way to, to gain a win, but when the tables turn, when majorities flip, that can be then used against, against the issue. And so that's not a recipe for success. 
I'm not suggesting that it's easy. I can't tell you that we've got those votes lined up, but I am convinced that people in this country, women in this country are not willing to be pushed back 50 years when it comes to determining their reproductive health care rights, um, potentially their, their, their fair access to contraception. So we, we've got a long ways to go with this conversation, but I'm going to be one of those who's going to be in, in the mix and, and working to try to find these, these paths forward that will be enduring, enduring, not just, not mm. just we able to move it in a, in a, in a, in a administration that is led by one party and then we flip it when when the majorities change. We've got e to have a policy that endures. Each individual senator's ability to follow their conscience depends on the pressures they get from their party. President Biden uh, on Wednesday evening talked about the violence that's in our political system. You've been in the Senate 20 years. You have taken votes that have put you at odds with your party. What has the reaction been to when you did that in 2002 and when you've done that more recently in terms of the level of violence or the threat of violence that you personally have experienced for doing something that was against what uh, the majority of your party, uh, that it was a different position than the majority of your party? Well, and it's been an unfortunate reality of late that uh, there is an escalating level of, of threats, intimidation, um, really bullying, that, that comes when, when uh, you don't, quote, toe the party line or when, when others just disagree with, with the stance uh, that you have taken. And, and that is unfortunate because I think what that does is that that uh, discourages good people from stepping forward to participate in, in the uh, in, in the policy making arena, it causes good people to to say, "I'm done with this. It's not worth it to put my family through that to 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 take the slings and arrows that come our way." Yeah. But but this is America. We cannot we cannot be afraid to to step into the arena. We cannot be afraid to lead in ways that that are consistent with our conscience and consistent, not necessarily with the views of our party, mm -hmm. but of the people that we represent. You, the do, people that we represent, I represent all of Alaska. Do you, Republicans and Democrats and Greens and independents and non, non affiliated, I represent all of them. So I can't just cater to, to that, that 26% right. who choose to declare themselves as Republicans in Alaska. As I recall, you were you, a man was arrested for threatening you. And I wonder just mm -hmm. that given that you know Republicans, whether you feel it's their obligation in leadership of the Republican Party to stand up and say this, this is not and should not be tolerated in our party to make these kinds of threats uh, and, and to speak up about it uh, in, in, and make it clear in no uncertain terms. I think it is an obligation for all of us for all of us to do that, because believe me, it is not just happening within the Republican Party. I, I work with good men and women on the other side of the aisle who share with me that they are also the recipients of, of the threats um, of violence and the intimidation that is coming. And, and I know that it happens on both sides and it is not acceptable, it is reprehensible that this should continue by anyone against any of us. And this is not just those of us in elected office. Look at what, look at what we're seeing with the, with the threats uh, towards the judiciary, the mm -hmm. Supreme Court, our cabinet members of both parties, whether in the Trump administration or now right. with the Biden administration. It is not acceptable. And we all need to speak out and condemn it. Well, we're very grateful that you uh, spoke with us this evening, Senator Lisa Murkowski. Thank you so much. Thank you, John. Appreciate it.